Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I do elder law at Myrick O'Connell, which is actually, you know, we're in Westboro. Um, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations or the seminars that I do, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to go to Marlboro. They don't want to go to Houston to live with their kids. You know, they want to be here. So the point of the show is to make sure that you know the people that you need to know and the programs you need to know about if you, like Frank and Mary, want to stay right here. So um, some of you know me. Everybody knows um, um, my wonderful co-host, Shelby Marshall. Um, who uh, was driven out of her house and is actually living in a, in a, in a farm in northern Maine right now, um, but has managed to, to, uh, to uh, connect in somehow. They still have that technology up in Maine. And so Shelby has got a great guest whom you've, I'm sure, met if you're a senior here living in Westboro. Whom do we have today, Shelby? Well, that's... That. <laughs> Sorry, Arthur, you took me off. You took me off course. I'm channeling my inner Bernie today. I just, you know, I was out shoveling and all. And actually, I'm sitting on my back deck. It's such a beautiful day here in Westboro. And I thought, why not do the show from outside? So anyway, more importantly, our guest today is um, long known, uh, uh, ever popular with our seniors, Alma Dimash, who She's the director of our senior center. Um, and uh, works closely, obviously, with all of the members of the Council on Aging. Welcome, Alma. Great to see you. Good morning. Well, Good morning. no question uh, that Alma and her uh, colleagues up at the Senior Center have been very busy engaging mm -hmm. with our seniors, uh, seniors in town um, in a host of ways. I don't want to uh, speak for Alma. She, I can plug in some uh, different things. But Alma, we wanted to have you on. Uh, it's the end of January. It's hard to believe we're already through the month here. Uh, what can we look forward to from you and your great team there um, for February? Take it away. All righty. Well, first of all, I just want to say that um, I can't even begin to thank and appreciate my staff enough for everything they've done. Um, we had a our last staff meeting shortly before um, everything sort of closed down back in March and everybody said, yes, we want to keep going as best as we can safely, whatever. We kept the buses on the road, Meals on Wheels going out. We made phone calls. We sent cards. We, I mean, we've just done. And um, there's been somebody in the office pretty much every day to answer phone calls. Um, and I can't tell you um, the connections that the staff have made and how proud I am for carrying on. A lot of centers closed down and that was it. But we managed to keep the keep the home fires burning, so to speak. So I just want to put that out there. Um, we are slowly but surely adding a few things into our repertoire. Um, I know that one of the big uh, questions right now in town is the Senior Veteran Property Tax Work Program. Um, last year, we got a little waylaid, like everything else. Um, this year, we are rolling it out a little bit late. So applications for that program will be available on the 22nd of February um, at the Senior Center, in the Assessor's Office, in the Veterans Office, and also on the town's website. They need to be returned to the Senior Center by March 5th, I believe it is. Yep, Friday, March 5th. Um, and we, we will be doing the placements real fast after that. There'll be some differences in filling how we have to fill out paperwork and all of that, but those, those are logistics we're still working on. But and, the um, program- if you, Yeah, if you could just briefly for our audience that aren't, that aren't familiar with the program, could you just give us a couple sentences on what that is? So this was a program that's been in existence for probably 16 or 18 years now. Um, anyone who's over the age of 60 who your home in Westboro is your primary residence um, and or any veteran of any age in town can apply for this program. It's volunteering in either a school office or a municipal office or department, um, 125 hours uh, for, the, for the calendar year and the, I think it's 1600, I wrote it down, it's in my office. It's a, it's a little over $1,600. Um, is a credit on your property tax bill that you will get 
in January of 2022. So it's okay. you're working for next year. Great. Um, we have 60 slots. I don't know if we're going to be able to fill 60 slots this year because I'm not sure um, if everybody's going to need the people that we've had in the past, but I do know that um, the selectmen, the selectmen and the town hall need a lot of people this year because we're checking people in both at the municipal building and the um, town hall. So um, we're hoping to fill as many of those slots as we can. Yeah, it's not only a great way, obviously, to uh, um, help yourself on taxes, but it's a great way to still stay engaged in the community. You know, you get to be greeting people, meeting people, um, new faces, and it's a really, it's an incredibly helpful service to the various departments uh, that uh, utilize the volunteers. So thank, thank you for sharing that. It is. And sometimes, I mean, it's just a matter of a department has a project that they've been trying to get to, you know, and whatever. So, um, and I know they've been tremendously helpful pretty much everywhere. I haven't heard any complaints. So um, we're, pre we're pretty proud of this particular program. There are no income guidelines, but we do try to place people in the lower income brackets sooner than um, others. And it also depends on your skill set. I mean, if a department needs computer skills or IT or whatever, um, you know, the, we, we definitely look for that. So, um, so in other words, may, so you're saying there may be some of these jobs that you could actually do from home, for example, if you're doing, if, if it's like an IT related person, but I was th just thinking in, in these time remaining months, this may be of a real interest to people. Well, we're looking at, yeah. out, out, you know, we are looking at some of that as far as like data entry and filing and that type of thing. Um, it just depends on what the departments, I'm hoping to get the department letters out next week. Um, I did mention it at the department head meeting a couple of weeks ago. So to have people start to think about it so that we can um, try to get as many people um, working as possible. Um, it, it's, it's, it will be a little more of a challenge this year, but I think John Steinberg and I are up to it, so. A um, couple other things that are going on. I just, um, we've, we've had a lot of success with our grab and go lunch um, and our dinner at the back door. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with it, our grab and go lunches are on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. Um, it's a sandwich, a bag of chips, a bottle of water and a cookie or a brownie or something. It's $3. Um, you, put, you need to put your reservation in by noon the day before and um, make sure your ticket is paid for prior to that. And um, you can just pull up to the back door and we'll bring your lunch out to you. Um, same thing with dinner at the back door. Um, that's on the, well, it's supposed to be on the third Monday, but we're amending that because of President's Day in uh, February. So it'll be Monday, December 8th. I believe it's meatloaf and mashed potatoes, which that's a great winter comfort food meal for sure. Um, Oh my, can you say days, that date? I'm sorry, can you say that date again? The amended date? Monday, February 8th. Okay, thanks. And those dinners are $7. And those reservations have to be made by Thursday, February 11th. Um, we usually, I mean, we did 95 meals in December. So, I mean, it's definitely yeah. very popular. And it's, you know, one night you don't have to cook or clean up, which is always wonderful. <laughs> Now, you know, if you, if you get Shelby involved in this, you may even start doing some outdoor dining. You know, she, well, may, she may be out there, bring your hat, you know, and, you know, this could be a whole new phase for this. I'm, I'm hoping once the weather gets a little bit better that we'll be able to do some entertainment in the parking lot. We had oh, that's a, good. Yeah. We had a, a holiday happening in December that we had to cancel, unfortunately, because of the gas leak situation at the senior center. But um, I've got something brewing in my brain right now to do right before Memorial Day. And I know that in March, when we do our dinner at the back door, which will be corned beef and cabbage on the 15th of March, that it's a very distinct possibility if it's not snowing, freezing, 60 mile an hour wind gusts or whatever, that um, Dennis Fenton will be out in the yard with his guitar and his Irish songs and his speakers, and you'd be able to listen to some Irish music when you pick up your lunch. So um, bring the yeah. mittens. Okay, yeah, and you might have to bring your mittens. But I'm hoping I'm hoping winter's just gonna kind of go away by March. Or, or maybe just maybe just the whiskey if we're having corned beef and cabbage. That'll warm everyone up. Okay, so <laughs> just get a you heard that from the chairman of the board of selectmen, ladies and gentlemen. I had nothing to do with that. Um, 
we also just put together a Fat Tuesday breakfast, same situation, music, you know, at the back door. Um, that will be free. It'll be pancakes and sausage and syrup, and you'll have to make your own coffee. For those of you like me who don't drink coffee, a cup of tea will do. Um, and you'll be able to pick that up between, I don't know, 8.30 and 10-ish. Um, you'll need to make a reservation. There is no charge. And if you are one of our folks who does not drive, who cannot get out and would like to partake in any of these programs, um, just give a call and talk to one of us up there and we will make sure things get delivered to you. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about is we, are, we have um, um, increased our um, rides for doctor's appointments. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of our volunteers who were also elderly um, when this all started. And so we've added um, Worcester. We now will take you to medical appointments to Worcester, Marlboro, Northboro, Southboro, and occasionally Framingham. I think that's all. Um, Shrewsbury. Um, and we, you know, you just need to make sure you make your appointment ahead of time. So we have enough notice, we can fit you into the schedule. Um, that's been going really well. Um, but I want to remind people that we do do that. And um, we're, you know, we're very careful with our buses. They're deep cleaned every month, along with the cruisers and the fire trucks, our drivers wipe everything down after you know whenever the bus is empty after having a bunch of people there you're required to wear your mask when you come into the senior center when you're on the bus um, and there's always masks and hand sanitizer available um, in the building and on the buses if you need it so um, and then i think the last thing i had a meeting yesterday morning with um, chief purcell and um, steve bakari about the vaccine situation. And I think I, you know, to quote my son, there's a lot of moving pieces to all of this. And I just want to say to people, you know, plans are in the works. This change is literally daily. I mean, I got an email from Elder Affairs last week and I got one yesterday that says totally different things in it. So just please be patient. It's all being worked on. Trust me, nobody's going to be left out of this. If you want to get a shot, you're going to be able to get a shot. Um, hopefully the new um, um, word from the White House is that the supply chain is going to get a little better. So we'll have more access to it. Um, you know, that we're setting up clinics for um, the local housing clusters. Um, and then eventually there'll be one at the senior center for everybody else. So just, just be patient. Please don't call the Doubletree Hotel anymore. Um, yes, they hosted the um, first responders um, for their clinic a couple of weeks ago because we were closed. Otherwise it would have been at the senior center. Um, but just be patient because as soon as we know, you'll know there'll be code red calls and code red texts and on cable and in on Facebook pages and the town's website and in the newspaper. So as soon as we know, you'll know. So just be patient. We're getting there. So, so that's thank you. I just, can, I, can I ask one yeah. trivia, one Frank and Mary trivia question? I know that I, I, you know, I've been I've read that the next the next group is over is 75 and over. Uh, yes. Is that 75 and over period or 75 and over with comorbidities? 75 and over period. period. That's a um, huge, huge group. So we, so last night at our Board of Selectmen meeting, um, uh, Chief Purcell gave a great update right at the beginning of the meeting. If you go to Westport TV and you watch the replay, if you do it on uh, through your computer, it's at minute 23 and 20 and 30 seconds. Um, and of course, Westboro TV has it on cable on a regular basis. A um, couple key points I want to reiterate that um, Alma shared. Um, we have about 1,500 individuals. I believe those are all the 75 plus group, Alma, when Chief Purcell yeah. said that. So we have about 1,500 individuals. Um, if you back out people that have already in that group that have already been vaccinated because of where they live, they might be part of a state program, et cetera, we've got some number less than that. And the tiering, Chief Purcell did a great job explaining how this is gonna work. So when um, Alma referred to kind of clusters, so when we think about places like maybe um, uh, uh, or, uh, Orchard- uh, Orchard Hill, Walker, Orchard, Meadow. Walker, yeah. Meadow. So clusters where 
the town can sort of easily identify where there are groups of folks uh, 75 plus is kind of how they're going to kind of go at peeling away and getting into these um, uh, the 1500 individuals. Um, can't stress enough to be patient. I know we're all anxious, but but the way you can help yourself to sort of you know, ease the anxiety, if you will, is uh, sign up for Code Red. So we've talked about this before on Frank and mm -hmm. Mary. Um, this is in a regular, I know it's a, I think it's a recurring uh, uh, piece of information in the Senior Center newsletter. Um, we have the link as I'm talking about Code Red um, on this show. Um, if you need any help signing up, because one of the key things that um, Chief Purcell uh, stressed is that as we moved into move, let me back up. Code Red will give you regular updates as to what's going on locally here in Westboro about vaccinations. The mask.gov website is still extremely valuable. That's sort of broader. Um, but the Code Red updates can come through your texting on your phone or through email, et cetera. If you need any help signing up for Code Red, my contact information will be at the end. Um, I'm happy to help you. I know Alma and her team are happy to help you. So call someone knock on, you know, or call your neighbor. They've got some teenage kid hanging out at home right now that will do it lickety split, right? So, yeah. and and the benefit of that too, um, and the important part here is that the registration for phase two is going to be online. So personally, I'd say it's a little bit of a glitch in the system when we think about our 75 plus folks, not that not that you're all not using, you know, iPads and whatever else, but it, it's a challenge. Um, some folks are just not as comfortable. So again, this is kind of where your community is going to be here to help in terms of if you need someone to help fill out that form online once registration opens. Um, all of those details will be coming again, Alma and her team and um, our Board of Health and our public safety uh, team will um, certainly be providing us with more information. And I can't say enough that there are always volunteers willing to say, how can I help someone? So Alma knows that she's tapped into that through our COVID task force and um, we will get people vaccinated. And I'm hoping that, you know, that, that number where we're at today by the time we talk, you know, a month from now, uh, we'll be, you know, in the hundreds, if not thousands, um, you know, sort of would be my hope. That's not a guarantee. It's just sort of a hope. Um, mm. After that, then the plan is to get to those 65 uh, plus in the comorbidities. And then um, Chief Purcell also spoke to um, the schools being the next uh, tier of that and the ability to vaccinate all the teachers uh, and staff uh, within one day. So again, that's much further out, but, you know, listen to that update. I think it's very informative and he'll be doing a um, Sunday um, for the code red system, excuse me, the, the phone, you'll, you'll hear his voice uh, providing an update. Um, he's always so calming. He's like a talk show host. He's like, you know, so he'll give you an update and um, stay tuned. Yeah. Um, two other quick things, just cause I have a captive audience here. Um, <laughs> Income taxes. We have been working with AARP to put together. Um, AARP usually does our um, tax clinic for us in the spring. Um, we were fortunate last year because they literally ended that Friday before all of this happened with us. Um, other towns, not so lucky because they were still going into March. Um, we're still working with AARP to pull all the logistics together. It's not going to start until at least the first of March. If not a little after that. So another thing, please be patient. And then the other thing, this is just community-wide. Um, if you are struggling with your heat, um, heat bills this winter, and I know this weekend it's gonna be viciously cold again, um, I do have the applications for um, the South Middlesex Opportunity Council, which is SMOC, um, their fuel assistance program. You can either come up to the center and pick one up or I will mail one out to you. It's a little bit different this year because they're not allowing us to do in person. Usually I send a packet out and then you get all your stuff together and come in and I'll fill it out with you. They're not allowing us to do that this year. However, um, I will send you the whole packet with all the information. If you have questions, please call me. I'll try to walk you through it. Um, I've been doing fuel assistance applications since 
I it's been forever. So um, I'm happy to help people, but please don't be, and please don't wait until 3.15 on Friday to call me and tell me you're out of oil. Cause that's just, especially when you knew you were out of oil on Wednesday, that just is really, um, that's a hair puller. Um, and and know, all, for, the, for, for the benefit of people who haven't done this, I think a lot of people self-select out on this program, you know, cause they're like, oh, that must be for really poor people and blah, blah, blah. Can you give people a sense of, of you know, what the, what the, the, the criterion would be uh, Actually, for them to qualify? I, I think it I just can. so happens. I just I saw that. It just <laughs> so happens I have a copy of the December newsletter. Um, if you are a single person with a minimum maximum gross income of thirty nine thousand one hundred and five dollars or less or a two person family with a maximum household income of 51,137 or less, um, you may be eligible for assistance. They add about, I think it's about somewhere between six and $8,000 if it's like three people and then four yeah. people. Um, but the I, point is but, for C, you know, for Frank and Mary or for Frank, if Mary has died or whatever, those are high numbers. You know, a lot of seniors mm -hmm. have, they have quite a bit of assets but those are well, big they don't, income assets you know? don't count. Exactly. So. And so, and so, you know, you may not, you know, you don't think of yourself as being eligible necessarily, but you really are. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's, and it's really worthwhile. All right. And these well, are your tax dollars at work. You know, these are your tax, tax dollars at work. Absolutely. And for anybody who's known me all of these many, many years, there's two things I can't abide and that's cold and or hungry seniors. So if you need some help, please call and talk to me. Um, if I'm not physically in the office, they can get me a message. I'm usually there on Thursdays and Fridays. So you can call and talk to me. We can talk about it. I'll send you the information. I'll help you with it. Um, but please don't be cold this winter because that doesn't do you any good either. So. Alma, thank you. Thank you so much for this. This was really, yeah. this was really great. Great to, great to see you. We know how busy you are. Uh, please extend our thanks uh, to the great work of your team and uh, keep up the great work. I certainly will. And we have a lovely Valentine's project that we're putting together with the Sugar Shack. So I'm kind of, I'm not a big fan. Of, I'm not a big fan of Valentine's Day, but this is going to be awful cute. So, All right. um, you know, stay warm, stay safe, wear your masks, wash your hands. We'll get through this. Thank you, Alma. All right. right. We're gonna, Take care. We're going we're gonna to stay to do a little update from, from Shelby on the town, but thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks, we really Alma. appreciate it. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So Shelby, yep. in our remaining time, what is new? What is new in Westboro yep. that folks should be following right now? Yep. So um, in just uh, about a month, we will be having town elections, March, Tuesday, March 2nd. I wanna call everyone's attention to that. And folks might go, my God, that's a month away, right? Like I can't even think about like two weeks from now, but you can mail in your votes. Um, so you contact the town clerk's office um, get a mail-in ballot and you can vote and cross it off the list. Uh, we have contested races, very excited to report that um, with the planning board and the select board. Um, so uh, it's important that you vote. Um, there will also be a candidates night um, hosted by the Democratic uh, the Westboro Democratic Committee that will be um, on uh, with the help of, of course, Westboro TV. Uh, that will be uh, um, toward the end of February. Um, so uh, we'll talk more about that, but I wanted to call folks uh, attention to that. Also wanted to let folks know that um, last night at the Board of Selectmen meeting, we talked about most likely, we didn't take a formal vote on it, that we would be moving town meeting from the um, early part of March to probably middle to the end of May. Uh, Want to get as many people vaccinated, hopefully encourage folks therefore to be uh, more willing to come out and attend town meeting. We've had uh, three very successful town meetings uh, so far, but the more people vaccinated, the further out we are, hopefully the, that curve starts to go down and then uh, more of us can gather for that important meeting. And um, Alma gave a, you know, a great update. I can't stress enough that if you need help, reach out to the resources, whether it's the senior center or youth and family services. Um, and I know we're all tired of this, um, um, but um, you know, stay safe and, and uh, stay positive. And I really wanna thank you, Shelby, for taking time out from your shoveling <laughs> to, do this, to, do, to do this show. 
Uh, so folks, you know, we hope you enjoy this. You ho we hope you enjoyed the summary from, from Alma. You know, we're going to keep you in touch every week. If you've got any questions on any of this stuff, you know, let Shelby know. Um, or if you want to get an appointment for a vaccination, she'll help you. <laughs> I'm not out there with you, Shelby. I'm too old. Right? <laughs> so, so folks, thank you very much for watching. And uh, we will look for, and thanks to the Westboro Cable TV for doing this. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you.